HKM TV presents another edition of Girls Varsity Basketball, this time a playoff edition. Hi, I'm Tim Mladic here with Steve Spector. And Steve, we have a big game here at a different, a bit of a different venue here at uh, Clark University as the fourth seeded Hopkinton Hillers take on the top seeded uh, Groton Dunstable. Yeah, Hopkinton and uh, Groton Dunstable, big, big game here. The you know the, the previous game, Medway pulled an incredible game out. Uh, very exciting and, finish. Uh, Hillers are take the ball to start the game here. Clark University. Early foul. Yep, morning start drives. She's back. Two free throws coming for the junior. Two free throws coming for Morning Star. First one somehow. Hits every part of the rim and backboard, falls in. First lead of the game, one nothing Hopkinton. Lily, Lily's had a great season. Uh, you know, th this is, you know, it's only a junior, so she's got next year to go, but this is, you know, she's gonna even have a big game tonight for this to. Absolutely, that they're, uh, Groton Dunstable's the top seed for a reason. Hopkinton will need all they have in order to make this one happen here tonight. Again, we saw, like you said, Steve, an exciting Medway finish now. Morningstar picks the ball off, takes it all the way, takes contact, nothing called. Ball rolls out of bounds, goes through Groton Dunstable. Probably a, no, a good no call. I just need a little more volume on this if you could. Check, check, check. Yeah. Groton Dunstable will inbound. We'll work on that. Again, the only just point of this game thus far, the Morningstar free throw. Ooh, I, must have, I must have traveled Yeah, there. it looked like a little bit of a walk there. Not called. 
Shot fired, tough look, rebounded from Hopkinton. Nice box by Regan on that play. Hubner pass inside to Goglin. Nice play to knock it out of bounds. Stays with the Hillers. A minute gone by here in the first quarter. Still a 1-0 Hopkinton lead. Pass gets into Corby. Over the outstretched hand of a Grand Dunstable defender. Corby had a great game. Huge three-pointer at the end of the last game against Medfield to basically seal the deal. Right, yeah, unfortunately I wasn't able to uh, help out with that one. Had some scheduling conflicts, no, but um, an exciting victory from what I victory. hear. victory. They were down by eight points in the fourth quarter or third quarter, and uh, must have been the fourth quarter, and they came back and a great finish, and Corby hit that three-pointer with maybe 20 seconds left. That really just everybody exhaled at that point. So, uh. Plus last year as Caveney launches a three, no good. Uh, last year, Medfield took out Hopkinton in the uh, sectional final, so a measure of revenge for the Hillers. Now as nice they look block. to get back to the sectional final. Shot no good from Groton Dunstable, but a rebound. Another shot no good, rebounded now by Kate Hubner. Under control, oh, too bad. Kind of both teams have a little, a, playing a little tentatively, kind of feeling each other out a little bit, uh, get the chemistry and the dynamics of the game. Uh, this is their first time playing each other, um, I believe, in a long time, if, right. if not ever. So, Plus, uh, um, they're in a college uh, arena here. It's even, even if it's relatively the same size as Hopkinton's home arena, still a different atmosphere to deal with. Oh, nice pass. A great look down low as finally Grod Dunstable gets on the scoreboard. Definitely Rachel a little Romich. Different, different volume uh, in, in the gym here. It seems louder than an yeah, athletic center. Yeah, absolutely. She's 5.30 left in the first quarter, only 2-1 to one, uh, for score. It's like a hockey score here. Oh, nice a move. Pass Ooh. inside. Oh, oh. Morningstar uh -oh. hits the ground, clutching her knee. Oh. Looks to be in some pretty bad pain. I, th I think she, um, that's really unfortunate. She kind of collapsed. Um, we just all, all kind of a hope, hope for the best, but right. she really took a spill, and I think her knee, uh, she's having an issue with her knee, so. Yeah, Jean Jeanette Emerson's out there. Take a look at her. her uh, I think she's. I think she has a um, something that a tough a tough injury there. So she's having trouble. I have a feeling it's uh, going to change the whole fabric of the game with her. With you know only two and a half three minutes into the game here, and um, well, you know what? First and foremost, let's hope she can. Um, Recover from this situation right, uh, tonight and for you know the future. The future, she definitely has a, an injury that's uh, not not a good one. So, yeah, Coach Greco and Jeanette both assisting Morningstar off the court, still grimacing with each step. A tough break for Morningstar, especially, and then for the Hiller team. Well, that's that's tough. Not not much to say except we'll be we'll be uh, hoping for for her to. Um, yeah, hopefully it's not as bad as it looks. I guess yep. that's all we can say right now. Exactly. Ga game on, and uh, you know the Hillers have a lot of depth. They're going to opportunity for some some of the other players to step in. So. And Marissa Prawl uh, just subbed in for Morningstar now. So earlier than I'm sure she imagined, but Marissa Prawl has had solid minutes all year. I'm sure she will fill Morningstar's shoes admirably. But now back to the game, five minutes left here in the first quarter. Still a 2-1 lead for Grand Dunstable. Left hand hook, no good. Prawl grabs the rebound. Caveney thought about the three, took a dribble and picked it up. Ball inside to Gogol and she turns. A Tough scoop shot. layup. Didn't really have an angle, tried to force it up anyway. And a foul called on Hawkinson on the loose ball. Boy, at 4.37 left in the first quarter, still two to one, right. an incredibly low scoring game at this point. And again, both teams kind of getting 
I think I think though, like you, you touched on, it. I think it's a bit of nerves. We see a bit of a like finicky movement, um, uh, atypical shots. That one, a good shot, but just short from Grand Dunstable from beyond the arc. Now Caveney has it, looking to get it inside to Gogol, and they cannot. Hubner gets it picked. And going down the whole way, the jump nice. saw, but blocked from behind. I can't tell who exactly blocked that, but Eddie Hiller knocked it out of bounds. I'll tell you what, um, I, I had a little different angle. It's a little tough, it's a different perspective here <laughs> at Clark University than it is at the Hiller uh, Absolutely. Athletic <laughs> Center at Hoppington. But uh, Cali Corby playing tough D, riding the player all the way down, and then Huber came at the last second and swatted it out of bounds. Great play. Shot fired, baseline jumper is good. Chloe McDonald. A four to one lead for Groton Dunstable. After that bucket, Hubner's attempt no good. Rebound goes to Romich. And she takes it all the way. Dish off for the Quick baseline shot. jumper. A nice play there. Abigail Hoey from Romich. A 6-1 lead now for Groton Dunstable. Ball up to Gogolin. She finds Prawl Ooh, under the hoop. Nice, nice spin. Great move from Rissa Prawl. Hawkinton's first bucket of the game, 6-3 now. Three minutes left in the first. Nice ball bit fake by Prawl to get the uh, Groton Dunstable player in the air. And nice spin move off the... A quick three off the backboard. No good, oh. and Gogolin called for a foul, loose ball foul on the rebound. That's a, I mean, it, it sounded and looked worse than maybe it was. I think there was, I hate to use the, uh, the soccer analogy, there could, be some, could have been some embellishment there yeah. on the part of the uh, Groton Dunstable player. Mm -hmm. But um, I, don't, yeah. I don't think the ref called the play until she went down and, and, and rattled the floor and then right, kicked all right. the foul, but anyway. It does sound louder in this gym too, like <laughs> yeah. you're saying. Nice pass oh, down low. Another unselfish pass, maybe seconds. one too many passes. Grand Dunstable still with 15 seconds left to get something done. Again, somehow the wow, great, nice save. great saving effort from Mulligan. Good D by the Hillers. And a short. high arcing jumper, short. Nice box by Hubner. From Eisenclam. She's short on the shot. Now Hopkinton on the other end. Olivia Gladue passed to Hubner. She fires a three. Yes. Knocks it down. Kate Hubner, the steady senior, has been all year. Knocks down a three. Tie game now. Despite all that, we, we sit tied at six. Almost a walk. It's like. Oh, they called it on Olivia. Oh. It's like Eisenclam driving. Ooh, that's Raza a foul. Second. foul, number four. Yeah, and Goglin's second foul. Definitely something to monitor for Hawkinton moving forward. She's staying out there for the time being. Caveney, active defense, somehow knocked the ball away. Somehow it results in a bucket, but waved off as an offensive foul. Great play from Hawkinton. Melissa Proud with a took one for the team there. Got run over. Big, big turn of events. Leaving Ivy out there with two fouls. Uh, let's see how that goes. Ooh, almost a travel by Olivia. She got herself together right in time. Nice, Callie. Corby Beautiful. with some fancy dribbling gets through the press. Caveney gets picked, picked from behind. Somehow comes nice. back with it and knocks in the layup. Hawkinton little with a 7 0 run. Excuse me, a little improvisation there by, by Regan. Eisenclam drives. Oh, nice D by Olivia. And she travels. Hopkin to defense, stepping up, forcing two, turn two turnovers in the last two possessions. Olivia Gladue, you won't appear in the, in the stat sheet, but she, she caused that turnover by sealing the baseline. Great play. And then she splits the press there. Almost loses it, but Hopkinton regains possession. Phil Groton Dunstable. Has not scored, I believe, over the past five minutes. It's been a long time. They had a six to one lead. That's not, oh, too bad. They force a turnover there. Now controlling it is tomorrow. 
Just about a minute left in the first quarter, 8-6 Hillers. Just inside the three-point line, a high arcing shot from Eisenclam. There are two Eisenclams on this team, Abigail, number 10, and Eleanor, number 12. Or excuse me, those were the years. Um, <laughs> Abigail's number five, and Eleanor's number 15. Oh, that's too bad. And right there, a steal from Eleanor Eisenclam, and she takes it all the way. That was a good non-foul on Olivia Gladue, just, just not worth the trouble to get a foul on her, because they're going to need her tonight. Caveney launches oh, a three, rattles it home. Five quick points for Caveney, 11-8 lead for Hopkinson. Shot clock is off. 15 seconds left for Grant Dunstable to try to tie this game up or get it within one. A lot of dribbling up at the top of the key. Gladue and Corby, good nice defense. D. Caveney steals the ball away, looks up to Gladue. Four seconds left. Gladue's going to have to take it. She does. No, no, a lot of contact, nothing called. Not much Gladue could do there. And at the end of the first quarter, um, injuries and slow offense to start. 11 8 lead at the end of for the Hillers. Well, sort of a mixed bag of feelings. I can tell you, I was right. a bit speechless there because yeah, I, 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 I did <laughs> see the, you know, the, uh, the injury to Lily is really as not. As I'm going to let this guy make his announcement. Sure. Well, I started to say, Tim, that um, you can we can see the Hoppington bench and you know Lily Lily Morningstar. Uh, you can still grimacing. Pr pretty over much there. say that she's out for the game, and you know uh, we just hope that her injury isn't as serious as as it might appear to be. Because right. I, you know, I was a little I got a little choked up because I've had I've had a major couple major knee surgeries right, yeah. in my in my day, and it's you know it it didn't look good when she went down. So uh, Jeanette Emerson has got her. Uh, you know, by her side, and uh, they're going to get through whatever it is. I know that she's in good hands tonight and, and after the game. But the Hillers find themselves with a three-point lead. Start of the second quarter. Right. Among all the uh, things that were going on, the lack of offense and then the injury, somehow they come out with a three-point lead at the end of it. And Hubner diving on the floor, her calling card. She forces a turnover. Hawkinson takes over. You know, so also, also worth noting, you can see the on the opposite side of the gym, there's a pile of Hoppington Hiller fans uh, here tonight, which you, they're just as loud. We can hear them through the headphones, so that's <laughs> good stuff. And uh, I think that they're like the six man award so far, keeping them in the game. The Hiller is up three, 11 to eight. Cave and he drives, blocked from behind. Eleanor Eisenclam again. She's got long arms, use those there to get, to reach around Cave and reject her shot. Yeah, she's definitely a, um, there's a lot of players on Grot and Dunstable that have a lot of length to them, you know. Uh, that last player, she's, she's a guard. She looks like she's a six foot one guard, you know. You don't see that too often. Oh, good D by Hubner. Almost a walk. Nice bucket there again. Eleanor Eisenclam keeping Grot and Dunstable in this game right now, offensively and defensively. Pass inside to Goldlin, knocked away. The huge part of Hawkington's offense is facilitating the ball through Goglin. Groton Dunstable jumps in front of that one there, knocks it out of bounds. Corby will inbound for the Hillers under Groton Dunstable's hoop. Pass to Gladue, Ooh, almost nice picked off. Goglin inside, she's stripped. Good Ooh. steal, and almost a foul could have been called on Ivy. That would have been very a third. Close, very close play. Wynn drives. Nice play. Wynn forced the steal. And then on the other end, excuse me, that was Romich. Romich forced the steal, and then on the other end, hits the lay-in, and then almost makes another turnover. 
Lots of different momentum shifts going on here. Right, absolutely. Hillers had an 11-8 lead at one point, or I believe, and now it's 12-11. Broughton Dunstable. We'll have to get, oh, they, the, the Crusaders, is that their nickname? I gotta get that, is that the? Right, yep, that yep. is, yep, Broughton Dunstable Crusaders. Hubner looking for help, somehow has to get to Gogolin. Ball tipped around and stolen. Eisenclam another, forcing another turnover. This one a deep two fired, no kind of good. Tomorrow forced on the shot, Gogolin collects the rebound. Oh, Pass inside bad. to Caveney, tipped away. Oh, nice Hubner recovery. somehow recovers it. Oh, nice Caveney, move. nice fake, step to the side, launches a bit too far on that shot. Nice move, just couldn't finish the play. Tomorrow launches the deep three, just off the mark, off of Groton Dunstable. Up and down, five, just under six minutes left in the half. 12-11, Crusaders of Groton Dunstable. I'll get that eventually tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we won't have to keep saying it. I know, really, exactly. The Hillers shut them down, but at this point, a 12-11 lead for those aforementioned Crusaders. Nice pass inside, great look. Tomorrow could not finish the shot. Hillers fortunate in that play. Hannah Wynn had a great dish down low. Could not uh, result in points for the Ooh, Crusaders. Almost Another uh, scoreless streak here. Uh, still 12-11, Groton Dunstable. It's been a Several minutes without a bucket for either side. The offense is kind of stalled. Hubner. Tough shot. A tough look. Could not knock it down. Now Romich on the other end takes the contact. Can't Indeed. finish. Gets her own rebound. Nice no, nice Again, call. fighting for that loose ball. Romich doing everything for Ron Dunstable. And then a missed shot. Rebounded by Gogolin. Refs, to their credit, are letting the girls play as much as they can. There's contact going and they're letting them yeah, play. Yeah, we're, so. we're not seeing uh, any fouls so far have been earned, I would yep, say. I would agree. <laughs> Corby probing the defense. Now Gladue passes inside to Caveney. Ten seconds left, six seconds left. Deep yes. three from Kelly Corby. I don't think I've ever seen her shoot a shot wow. like that for in my three years of broadcasting right. Hiller games. A step behind the three-point line, Corby knocks it down. I mean, she had a big, just similar shot uh, the other night against Medfield, maybe not quite as far as that. Ooh. Hubner a bit too aggressive, jumps on the back of Romich, foul there. Well, given the unfortunate situation with Lily going down here with her knee, Callie is uh, an excellent candidate to pick up some of the scoring tonight. Right. Because she's probably going to be on the floor most of the, the game, uh, given the way she plays her defense, and she's very, very, uh, takes care of the ball so well. That's way out of. A three hits, it looked like it hit out of bounds, like behind the, and that's what Coach Greco's contending. And it looks like they are going to give it to Hawkinson. Yeah, it hit one of the. Uh, yeah, it hit one of the uh, support beans exactly. behind the hoop. But uh, took a second, but the referees get the right call, yeah. and Hopkinton takes over. Marissa room. Prawl wide open, Stop steps in. Oh. Just a bit too strong on that one, can't knock it down. No foul, Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, that's a pretty big deal tonight with her. She's got two, so we just keep an eye on that. And not to uh, belabor the point, but again, with a uh, key component in Morningstar going down, Gogolin just being out there will be even more important. Nice box by Hubner. Still Eleanor Eisenclam with the offensive rebound, though, saves the possession for Grand Dunstable. Easy. Gromich drives, somehow gets around the goal, and nice drive from the junior guard. Well, I think Ivy, you know, is a, I don't want to say she got out of the way, but she doesn't want to get her third foul. With three right. minutes left it's in the second Sometimes quarter, you so. have to make a business decision. So. Yeah, I think that was a smart decision on that play. Goglin almost Ooh. lucky again, almost saw that elbow <laughs> escape. But then Caveney does draw a foul. This one on the floor. Abby Hoey. Abby Hoey picks up the foul, her second of the game. Third team foul for Grand Dunstable. 
Tie game, 14-14, three low. minutes. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. No, it, it is hit a very low scoring <laughs> game. You're not kidding. Yeah. Now, uh, Eisenclam with a steal. Good D a by A bit Callie. too strong on the lay-in attempt. Mm. Too bad. And a great effort there from, I believe, Jordan Wynn, who was fighting for the ball with a Hiller and threw it off of uh, Hawkington out of bounds, keeps it in the Crusaders' possession. We got three minutes exactly left here in the first half. 14-14 game. And a wide open jumper. No good from Hoey. Offensive rebound, another attempt, no good. Hubner secures the rock. Nice play. Regan looking for the ball. Finally gets it in the corner. Thought about the three. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Corby with it behind the three-point line again. And a foul call down low. Ivy Goglin working her way into the post. Picks up the foul, or draws the foul. Got to be careful there. <laughs> exactly. You know, they get a fresh 30-second clock on that, too. Prawl with a tough shot. Look. <laughs> Somehow gets the reverse to fall. Marissa Prawl. Wow. While falling, gets the shot, knocks the shot down. Acrobatic layup to say the least. I mean, she old fashioned three pointer coming up. That was an, like an old 1970s special. Kind of going up one way, putting up really incredible uh, reverse layup. No good on the free oh, nice throw, but work. Caveney grabs the offensive board. And Hubner drives. Oh, too bad. Hopkinton almost got four points out of that trip. No go on Hubner's lay-in. Two minutes left, 16, 14 Hillers. Two minutes left in the half, I should say. A nice cut from Ooh, Romick. A little bit of a walk there. That was about a two and a half Euro step. I, th I think you might be right. There was that about one. three or at least three, perhaps four steps on that. But uh, the refs are, like I said, to their credit, calling a good game. Prawl somehow got around the defender and then picked up a foul in the process. Eisenclam, Eleanor Eisenclam, picks up the foul. Eisenclam's first. Again, Hubner trying to get it in. Grand Dunstable doing a good job making this difficult for the Hillers. Great job, good poise by the, all the Hillers, just getting the ball to the right person, bringing it up, maintain their composure. Goglin wants it Not down low, bad. calling for it, a tough pass. Somehow Hubner ends up with it. She's Surrounded. looking to get a shot off, <laughs> finds it to a cutting Goglin. Great play from Kate Hubner. Great play from Ivy Goglin. Both in sync there as Goglin knocks down the layup. I tell you what, Hubner had a three white shirt jersey around her, all of them over six feet tall. She somehow maintained her composure and found Ivy cut into the hoop. Ooh, that's a foul. The hook no good from Hannah Wynn. Romick, again, making her impact felt on this game. Gets the offensive rebound. She's fouled. We'll be shooting two. Gaveney also just picked up her second foul. You know, it's manageable. Until two, it's not. <laughs> until it gets to three fouls in the first half, and right. then it becomes a situation. But but so far, you know, Coach Greco, hey, it's like sudden death game here. You know, right. You know, with both, both girls, uh, Ivy and Regan, with two fouls, I think it's a somewhat of a risk, but they're really smart senior players, and uh, they'll We've got to be very careful. Yeah, Caveney almost threw the ball away. Romick jumped in front, knocked it out of bounds. i got to say, the Hillers have, have had a few of those, I want to say, lazy passes there, and that was one of them. That's like a third one. they got to take care of the ball a little better than that. Goglin brings it up. Pass over to Caveney. She launches a three, knocks it down. Caveney, a big three. You can see it from here going in. <laughs> A 21-15 lead for Hopkinton, just under a minute now. Left here in this first half. Beautiful shot by Regan. And, and Eisenclam walks. She doesn't like the call, but 
It was a travel, a turnover there for the Crusaders. And Marissa Prowl, you know, another, you know, unsung hero player, and even on that specific play, caused the turnover with some, kind of anticipated the move and got the Groton player to travel. That was a great play by her. Prowl with it now. Hands it off to Gogolin. Little pick up there, but Gogolin recovers. 10 seconds left on the shot clock now. Hopkinson gonna do something quick. Corby over to Hubner. she launches the three. Oh, in and, in and out. But Corby fighting for the offensive rebound. Can't get it, 15 seconds now. Shot clock off for Groton Dunstable. Down six, Romick takes it all the way. Oh. And a tough call there as Prawl got bowled over. Didn't look like there was much room for Romick to go, but two free throws coming for the junior. I don't know. I mean, there's no, not a real harmful foul. It's her first, and they're gonna, she's, she's playing great, and they're gonna need her, again, with Lily not being available. Right. She's one of the few players that are gonna need to step up, and I, I thought she got position there, again, not being a homer, but. A homer I, away from home in no, this case. No, at this point, I thought she had both feet planted. I didn't, I didn't really understand that, that call there, but nevertheless, 21-16 Hillers, nine seconds left in the first half. Robick makes the second one, 21 to 17 now. Again, 10, nine seconds left. Hoppington with a chance to add to the lead, up four. Corby with it, steps back, three. Oh, oh the back oh, for oh, Kelly oh. Corby. Oh, man. Knocks down the three, a huge shot. Eerily reminiscent of a three Medway hit to uh, take the lead late against Neshoba in the game before this one. And that gives Hopkinton a seven point lead going into halftime. Six huge points from Callie Corby. Jeez, I gotta say, I, I mean, I, I could see her face from here, Tim. She launched that thing, and I, you know, I, we have a pretty good angle about rim level. She stepped, she, she created the space, first of all. Right. And then stepped back five, four or five feet beyond the three point arc and launched it, banked it in. As soon as it went through, that's the biggest smile I've seen on her face all year, and, she, and, and her teammates just mobbed her. So great end of the first half, and you know you want to go in with some momentum. The Hillers just did that. Hey, absolutely. Again, we'll see. Uh, we assume Lily's going to be out for the rest of this game. We'll see if she returns to the bench for the second half. But like you said, Steve, a seven-point lead for the Hillers going into halftime break. We hope you guys join us in a few minutes for the second half. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. I'm Gunny. I'm Haley. Hi, I'm Davis. Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love H Camp. I love H Camp. We love H Camp. And I volunteer for H Camp TV. And I watch H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. We love H Camp TV. HKM TV back with you here for the start of the second half. Hopkinton, fourth seeded Hopkinton Hillers taking on the top seeded Groton Dunstable Crusaders. The Hillers have a seven point lead now, up 24 to 17 as we start the third quarter here. Callie Corby's six points, both coming off threes. A huge part of Hopkinton's lead as she hit one to end the first Tough half. Shot. Ivy Goglum gets right to work. A tough right hand hook. Gets it to fall, 26-17 now. Well, that's quite a spread, nine point lead against the number one seed. I mean, there's a long way to go, and and uh, there's a reason why the Crusaders are the number one seed, so. Uh, but right now, you gotta like where the Hillers are sitting. Oh, nice play by Huber, I a think. Nice drive, but Hannah Wynn too hard off the glass. Marissa Prowl taking the spot of Lily on finish up the game here. As Lily's getting her knee checked out and we wish her well. Yeah, again, she hasn't come back out onto the floor after the halftime break. We'll let you know any updates regarding that. Corby, the floater, off the backboard, no good. A bit too oh, strong, nice. but she grabs her own rebound. The referee calling a foul across the court. Foul, number 20, Jordan Wayne, her second. 
Jordan Wynn picking up the foul, her second foul. The senior forward for Groton Dunstable. Caveney, wide open lane, she takes it. No, look, no luck on the layup. Tough finish for Caveney. Caveney, great job, nice steals play. the ball away. She's looking to take it oh, down, and that's man. probably going to be a charge. Nothing called. Wow. Somehow, I, there, I mean, I would have called uh, even uh, being for, uh, for Hopkins in here. That looked like a charge and a half going against Caveney, but nothing called. Groton Dunstable just takes it out of bounds. I, I, it's hard not to call one way or the other, right. like you say. <laughs> I mean, Regan was a little out of control, like sort of so piggyback what you said, but you know, the other, the, the Crusader player didn't necessarily have her feet set either, so I, I, maybe it was a, a good non-call in some respects. Um, certainly for the Hillers, because that would have been number three on Regan, so right. they dodged a bullet there. Looks like Lily's back on the bench with her. Oh, nice play. Corby, the nice yes. cut, gets the dish from Gogolin. Eight points now for Corby. And I gotta say, did not expect Corby to be the one to step up points-wise for the Hillers with Lily out, but step up she has with eight here. Two right there on that nice pass from Goglin. 28-17 lead now. I mean, there was a lot of really good things that Callie did in that play. She, she made a nice backdoor cut, got the beautiful pass. She didn't really have a backboard to work with. Right. So she had really just to put up this really soft shot and bounced it off the back of the rim from the side, and it dropped in. But she, she took took a lot of the uh, the mustard off the shot, so it, so it fell softly enough. But that was a very difficult shot without having the use of the backboard because of the angle. But I tell you what, 5:48 left in the in the second half. Hiller's up by 11. I don't know that anybody thought this would happen. Um, and right now, again, there's a plenty of time left. And Broughton Dunstable probably going to, you know, they just call a timeout to gather themselves, which was a good, good uh, decision by Coach uh, Henley, if I'm pronouncing his name right. Yep. And uh, we'll see. Uh, we got plenty of time left in 11 point lead. Let's see if we can keep it right. going. You know, the um, since we pointed out at the beginning, Grand Dunstable had a 6 1 lead. They've been outscored 27 to 11 wow. since that span. A huge, a huge, huge turnaround. And the Hillers don't seem to be stopping anytime soon. Oh, nice D by Regan. Yep. Caveney stuck her leg out there and not got in front of the pass, knocked it out of bounds. For what it's worth, I want to just give a shout out to the Hoppington Hiller crowd here, definitely outnumbering the Groton Dunstable crowd by two to one margin. A three knocked down. Jordan Wynn, or a deep two, excuse me. Foot must have been on the line. 28 19, Hiller lead. Nice shot. Hadn't, they hadn't had some points in a long time. That was first points in the second half. Corby over to Prawl. She launches a three, <laughs> knocks it down. Callie Corby probing the defense making the defenders crash to her and hits Prawl for an open three. Caveney, a good close defensively. Hubner fighting for the rebound, can't get it. Another three Long. for Grand Dunstable off the mark. Ramick, the offensive rebound. Ramick, she can't finish her shot. Good job by Ivy to gather the, the ball. Six foot two, needed to, needed to get the ball back on that. Hiller still have a 12 point lead. Inside to Goglin. She loses control, a turnover for the Hillers. Somebody's got to stop ball here. Wynn driving over to Romick. Her shot, nothing but net. She had a nice stop and pop on that play. Pass inside to Caveney. She turns, squares up, gives it back to Hubner. Hubner driving. Lots of contact, take. no call. No luck for Huebner on that Ooh, drive. Almost a walk. 4 Four minutes left here in this third quarter. 31-21 lead for the Hillers. Marissa Prawl again getting position. She's been getting really knocked around this court today, and she picked, she draws another offensive foul right there.
And she has to come out. I don't know if she just came out number 23 with her third foul with four minutes left in third quarter. That's a big development. Yep. Abby and, Hoey. And uh, Marissa taking it for the team. Again, she got run over. Olivia Gladu. Some fancy dribbling. Dribbles through the press and draws a foul in the process. That's their fourth foul of the third or fourth. Golden inside, an aggressive move there. The defender wasn't quite as close as she thought, kind of threw her off her balance. Tough D by the Hiller, shutting them down, 10 point yeah, lead. Every passing lane Grand Dunstable's looking for on that one has been closed off. Good, Good defense from Huebner. Stayed straight easy, up. Easy, easy. Now Two pass on up to Caveney. Goglin takes the contact, <laughs> gets the shot up and in. The Hopkinton Hillers are not letting <laughs> anything stop them right now. I mean, I don't know how that ball went in. It was a bunch of English on the ball. She kind of put a little spin on it. It rolled right in, didn't use the board. Tough shot fired. This one knocked down. Ellie Eisenclam. Been a while since we called her name, but she banks the shot in there. 33-23, Hiller lead. Back and forth. Good play by Corby, heads up. Shielding the, the ball with her body. Caveney launches the three, oh, way off the mark. Kind of rushed that one. Too bad. Somebody's going to stop Ramek brings ball. it up. Nice take from Ramek. Almost. Makes the circus lay and does draw the foul. Two free throws coming for the junior guard. Be on Regan, a third foul. But I believe it's been about a, a period of, or a quarter of game time since we pointed out she got that second foul. So that's a pretty good clip for Caveney there. I mean, it's not a. Not, not ideal, of course. Not <laughs> ideal, not, not a, uh, an emergency. But I think uh, bringing in a couple players. Yeah, to Amelia sure. Sensony, the freshman, getting some minutes in a big, big playoff game. And she, she can light it up from three-point land if she gets a, some openings too. So Takes a village, as they say. Right now, the Hillers have got it going their way. Romick's second free throw finds the mark. 33-24, to 24, Hiller lead. 235, left in the third. Need some help. Oh, too bad. Eisenclam steals it away, loses it out of bounds. Stays with Groton Dunstable. Groton Dunstable, to their credit, that's tough full court press. And they're, they, they have a lot of tall players. They're all about six feet tall, all of them. They look like that right? anyway. <laughs> good D. Sensony tips the pass. Somehow Eisenclam recovers it. Corby tight on the ball handler out. On a three-point line, a nice pass, a better cut, but way too strong on the shot. And then a frustration foul looks like there off the miss. 20, that one goes on 20, White Grant Dunstable. Jordan Wynn. And her third foul. Four fouls already for Ron Dunstable here in this third quarter. Get some help in the middle. There it is. That's the play right there. Goglin finds Hubner now. Two on two. Easy. Hubner always being aggressive. A bit too aggressive on that one. Did not have the numbers. Ran into some trouble. Lost the ball out of bounds. Yeah, a little out of control. I mean, she made an initially a nice crossover move, and then she unfortunately lost it as she came up to the uh, baseline. A little bit of a scoring lull here uh, for the Hillers. They had a 24-point, 24-17 lead at halftime, and they've only scored nine points this quarter, which is a little bit of a low production, but. They've still increased oh, nice their block. lead, though. Still now up nine as a block sends that ball out of bounds. Great defense from the Hillers. Now Caveney and Corby step back out onto the court. Sensony and Gladu take a rest. Interesting, just a really quick break for Corby and Caveney less than 15 seconds, but just to gather themselves. And uh, Coach Keen leaving his senior and junior players in there just to keep this uh, party going here. Eisenclam, a nice floater. She gets that to fall. She's a tough player. She's got probably 10 points at least right now.
Caveney's pass, ill-advised, picked off. The pass from Romick. A nice recovery. Now Eisenclamp somehow comes up with a shot. Oh. That one rattles around, knocks down, 33 to 28 now. A nice little run for Groton Dunstable here as we get closer to finishing up this third quarter. Just a minute left. Yeah, the Hillers had a 12-point lead at one point. Now it's uh, Caveney launches the three off the mark. Five-point lead. That's a little different. And Hubner reaching in there, caught another foul for Hopkins. Only the second foul for the Hillers this half. Which is pretty low, but playing tough D and clean D for the most part. Just under a minute left in the third quarter. Five point lead for the Hillers. Oh, nice Pass D. inside, taken away. Caveney with the steal. Under About control. Eight second difference in the shot and game clock. Plenty of time. Goglin inside. There we Gets go. Gets the right hand hook to fall. Absorbs the contact and knocks it down. Shot clock is off now. 20 seconds left for Grunt Dunstable. Down seven. That was a big hoop they hadn't happened in a while. And a foul call down low. Offensive foul, I think. Wow. Clearing out, they called. Nicole tomorrow. An unusual call to say the least, but one that favors the Hillers. Didn't see that one. Now 15 seconds left for the Hillers. Again, shot clock is off. They get plenty of time to work their offense. See if Cali can hit one more. 10 seconds left now. Or well, Marissa, we'll take either one. Prawl inside to Gogol and she turns, loses it. Prawl again launches the three. Ooh. Got It looks like she definitely was contacted on that shot, but the referee did not call it. And I think the uh, one of the referees just went over to Coach Greco right there and told them they missed that call. Maybe we'll have potential makeup coming in the fourth quarter, I mean, but yeah, that's that's too bad, Marissa. I mean, the, the Hillers kind of lost the, their possession briefly with about three or four seconds to go, and the ha as the period's winding down, and Marissa somehow gathered the shot uh, with about a second and a half and launched it, but she claimed that she got hit, like you said, went for her to go up to the ref and put her palms up in the air and say, "Hey, what was that all about?" But, That's right, as we hear the uh, floor announcement there, the winner of this game goes to play against Medway, who won, like we talked about a bit, um, that tight, tight game against Neshoba, a very exciting game. We got here a bit earlier to see the end of that one. Uh, Med Real Mamata. It, it is indeed, indeed. They were down. I was talking to the uh, Medway athletic director a bit before um, our game. And he was saying they were down for the majority of that contest, but in the fourth quarter really came on strong uh, and ended up winning that game. So they have the right to uh, be in the next round of this sectional tournament in Hopkinton hoping to make it an all TVL affair like it was last year. See, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of TVL teams in the, in the tournament. And, and uh, rightfully so, I'd say. Yeah, there's a lot of good teams this year. So um, right now the Hillers are having their way. They had a seven point lead going into the half and they still have a seven point lead going in the fourth quarter. A little bit of a, uh, I don't know if it's a low scoring game, but a lot of good deep play, being played by both teams. Not a lot of fouls, so uh, so far so good. We're having a lot of sporadic so scoring. I will I will say that a lot of valleys and peaks. We'll see how the start of this fourth quarter goes as a three launch from Ron Dunstable knocked down. Hannah Wynn, junior guard, launched it. Ron Dunstable within four now, 35 to 31, Hiller lead. Caveney looking for help, finds Goglin. Goglin travels, turns the ball over. Romick taking it up for Grant Dunstable. Win, another three. Nice box by Cali. That Callie. would have been a huge momentum shift. Foul Somehow rounds out, yeah, and then Caveney on the rebound draws the foul. 
Bronwyn Mulligan. So what, what I heard in the last game, uh, Groton Dunstable, at this point in the game, they had a lot of length and they, they did a lot of full court pressing towards the end of the last game and it really caused some trouble. So the, the Hillers can combat that with their ball handling skills. Right. And uh, we'll see how that plays out. Prawl, yep, took a little hop step before that move. Another travel of, uh, turnover for the Hillers. Still up four. Broughton Dunstable fans saying that you can't do that, the chant. Uh, first I've heard of that, but they did a nice job of that. I gotta give them credit when credit's due. Oh, that little walk there. Hawkinson will inbound, and they do get it in. Again, 6.30 left in this fourth quarter. 35-31 lead for Hawkinson. Now Huebner with it on the wing, looking for something. Gets into Gogol and stolen away. Telegraph that pass. Ooh, that's a walk. That looked like a walk indeed on Mulligan, but it turns into two points. And now Grand is down just two. Nice finish. Uh, we got a nice finish uh, on that play and a nice finish in this game going on right here. A nice pick from Prawl. Goglin gets it stripped from behind. I gotta say she, I, she looks a bit gassed out there. She might need a bit of a break. But again, Hopkinton has stayed with this five for the majority of this contest, subbing in Gladue and Sensony occasionally as Caveney's blocked. And in in the, you can feel the momentum shifting. And oh, and Romick had break. a wide open layup. An easy two points for Grand Dunsmall. Would have tied the game, but she lost the ball. Yeah, I think that's a good timeout by Coach, uh, Coach uh, Greco. And you just pointed out, Ivy looks gassed. I think, I think the whole team is just, by definition, this is a pretty intense game. And, right. I, and you know, they, they don't have Lily. So uh, there's a lot of minutes that other people have, have to pick up the slack. And I just think that what, what comes down to all, you know, think about those, all those suicides and wind sprints in, right. in October, November before the season. This is where it comes back. Well, we'll have to see what, how that plays out. There's still a lot of time left. And, you know, it's not like uh, Coach Greco doesn't have anybody to go to on the bench. Right. He still has uh, plenty of players to rotate seven or eight deep. Not a problem. Uh, the, key, the key here is, as you said, Ivy. And uh, I, I was going to add Regan. Mm -hmm. You know, Regan, and she's had a, at least a few games where she's caught a little fire in the fourth quarter, launching a couple three-pointers. And ob obviously, Callie recently has been launching the three-pointers. Um, really in a clutch situation like the last game and then a couple tonight at halftime. So the, you know, the Hillers are going to dig down deep here, see what they're made of. Right, and uh, one thing to note, Groton Dunstable is sitting at 16 fouls right now, so one more and the Hillers will be shooting free throws. Good point. Uh, and uh, over the final six minutes, that could play a huge part in this game as now the Groton Dunstable crowd starts to liven up, sensing the change of momentum, but Hillers still with a two-point lead. And now the Hillers countering with their own chant, trying to give their team a little steam. Under control. Electric in here right now, Tim. <laughs> oh, too bad. Well, that's a oh, foul. That's gotta be a foul. Gotta call a foul on that one. Romick runs over Crawl. In a one on one situation. That's right, yeah. As yep, you point out. One I tell you, if Marissa Prawl should get some, I don't know what they could give her, but she needs some type of award for how many times she's been run over tonight. I think we'll three or four. We'll give her a Tommy point. You know, Tommy <laughs> couple, Heinsohn, you know, from the 60s and one of the legendary Still Celtics. Still calling the uh, Celtics games now. He's about 80 years old, but, you know, he would appreciate all her work. Oh, there you go. And then she hits the free throw. That key, a clutch free throw there for Prawl. You know, Marissa, to her credit, she's not... I don't know exact, her exact height. I'm just going to make a guess about 5'7", maybe 5'8", tops. But she's, she's, she's defending, playing against six-footers, playing her heart out up there. She, those are huge free throws right there. There you go. Yes. Oh. Oh, that was a, that did not look like a great call from our vantage point. 
Kral hit with the foul as she was diving for the loose ball. Tough break there for awesome. Hopkinson. I just think that was a non-call, as, as, uh, as objective I, as I could be. I would agree. Just two, two uh, players going, diving for the ball. I didn't, I didn't see any kind of contact or anything. If, if anything happened, it was slight. Not like the play where Prawl just got run over, but yeah. either way, a foul is called and Grand Dunstable. Shot is up, bit strong off the backboard. Goglin fights for that nice rebound, job. somehow muscles it away. Under control. Ooh, almost a walk there, a little shuffle. I think got away with one. Corby drives, the lane opens up, her floater a bit too strong. Goglin with a great offensive board, a bit uh, impatient on the shot selection though. And now Eisenklam takes it down the lane. She misses, Nothing. Mulligan no good, and Goglin another rebound. Good, nice, good defense by Regan to avoid the foul. That was huge because she just kind of got her feet set, fell backwards, and the other, the, the, the Groton player just kind of lost uh, her mojo on the shot. Ooh, Kral, a, I don't know how, how they call the travel. If anything, probably would have been a no call, but a turnover nonetheless there for Hawkinson. A lot of energy in the building here, Tim. I, I, you know, I'm looking at the uh, the Hillers. Fan base is standing up, all the students there. The same with Broughton Dunstable. Now the Hillers have a four point lead, but it certainly does not feel like that. You can feel the momentum favoring Dunst Broughton Dunstable, but Eisenclan misses that shot. They're a tough break for the Crusaders. Yeah, definitely a, a lower scoring game and um, a lot of tough defense being played right now. Good battle down low with Ivy and um, Looks like number 30, Meredith Sesnick, or 20, I'm sorry. Sesnick is on uh, Hopkinton. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it's all right. I'm getting caught. Jordan Wynn, I'm, 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 my bad. One second for Caveney. She launches a shot, almost got it to go, considering the circumstances. And now Wynn brings it up. Oh, nice play by them. By Mulligan had a nice, had a a great pass, got a, received a great pass, but not finished the lay-in. Again, another tough break for the Crusaders. And a, and a nice break and for the nice Hillers. It for was the a Hillers. Beautiful, I mean, it was a wide open layup. She missed it, so that's a big deal right there. Three minutes left in the game. Hillers up by four, 37-33. Now, based on the way this time game up. feels, I, I would say the Hillers, yeah, timeout call for Coach Greco. I feel like the Hillers probably need to score about Six or eight more points to really kind of not put this one away, but to feel comfortable. A big three here would help, and Coach Greco is calling out, uh, calling the timeout right now to talk things over with his team. Again, without Lily Morningstar, who looks like the pain has subsided a bit for her, which is good news, but um, her playing days, at least for today, are um, in the books. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but to, you know, you got to you got to give the Hiller girls some extra credit for. Right taking on the number one seed without Lily for the, the majority of the game. And then, you know, at, at this point, still have a four-point lead. Very good timeout um, by Coach Greco. Right. As I think Marissa, or I can't remember, somebody was uh, trapped in the sideline with a two six-foot Groton Dunstable player surrounding her. There's no place to go. So that was a really good timeout by Coach Greco, as I said. And, and I think a, a, all, in addition to being trapped, I think the girls need, are, are yeah, just they need a little, a little, little break because um, – like we've been saying, he's been sticking with this same five for what feels like most, like most of the second half with the occasional substitutions of Gladue in there for ball handling. But for the most part, it's been Corby, Prawl, Goglin, Caveney, and Hubner, and rightfully so. The team has lived and died with these players over the last three years. Goglin gets it inside, gives it up quickly. Two seconds left, shot from Corby. Oh. Can't get it, Caveney with the rebound, she's fouled. Great rebound from Regan Caveney. Make a great, uh, took advantage of a bad situation. Collecting the offensive rebound, then drawing the foul, two free throws coming. Nice play by Regan to get the, easy. They're all real big right here. Yeah, hard off the back of the rim there. Nice touch here, Regan.
There we go. KV knocks down that one. A five point lead now for the Hillers. Good D by Hubner. Hubner, great effort. Anticipated that pass beautifully. Have stepped out of bounds though on while she was swiping at the ball. So stays with Grand Dunstable, but still a great play from Hubner. Good D by Regan here, shutting down 24 of Groton. No room. Just under 2.30 left here in this fourth quarter. Tough tonight, D. Eight seconds left in the shot clock, no foul. Oh, Hard man. off the glass. Jordan Wynn, or Hannah Wynn, excuse me. Left-handed prayer off the backboard. Uh, Three-point lead for the Hillers. Two minutes left in the game. We got him right where we want him to. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> The offense has certainly slowed for both teams, especially the Hillers here in this fourth quarter. Goglin inside, he's got five seconds, steps back, launches the shot, knocks it down. A huge jumper for Ivy Goglin. Beautiful. You know, she created the space, stepped back, she squared up, didn't, didn't rush the shot. Beautiful rotation, that was a really huge hoop there for Ivy. Gromick looking for help. Tough D. Finds it, Nisenklam. And a blocking foul call. Looks like this one going to Corby. That's all right. I think that's a good foul. It's only the third foul or maybe the fourth foul. A minute and a half left in the game. And that's amazing, only her first foul. The game's almost over and she's played such tough D. Oh, Win, a nice fake pass. And a, or a nice fake shot and an even better pass to her sister, Jordan, for the bucket. 40 to 37, again, a three-point deficit for Groton Dunstable. Just get, work to get a good shot here, girls. She Just got over him. a minute left, 20 seconds left on the shot clock for the Hillers. A bucket here would do wonders for their chances to take this game home. Goglin launches a crazy one. Oof. Lots of contact. Miss, Marissa Prawl got in there to help Knocked the ball away and it goes, it's awarded to Hawkinson. A great effort from Prawl. Boy, she landed right in her backside. She really did. hard, <laughs> man. That, that, tough kid. But without that effort, uh, it would have been seconds, a clean they rebound. They got to launch it. Got five seconds now. Cal Corby pass tipped out of bounds. Three seconds left now for the Hillers to get a shot off and everybody on the bench and the coaching staff letting everybody know three seconds to get this one off. Tough spot for the Hillers. They got to launch it. Pass inside to Goglin. Off to Hubner. Not going to make not it. Not enough time. The high arcing pass did not get to Corby in enough, with enough time. Turnover there. 47 seconds left. Three That's point lead one. for the Hillers. That was a tough uh, possession there. Got to credit the Crusaders for their tough D on and that. Timeout from Coach Greco. Not sure how many timeouts are left. Uh, I don't know if we can get that information, but I know it's, we're winding it down. Both teams have been used their timeouts for the most part. Hiller's uh, missed opportunity there, but still. Still. Right, just some news there. The winner of this game going to play at WPI against the uh, Medway Mustangs, who earned that trip earlier today with a victory over Neshoba. But right now, the Hillers fighting for their own playoff destiny up 40 to 37 with 40 seconds, 47 seconds left. Hillers still um, under the uh, one, uh, one and one free throw limit, only sitting at 14 fouls right now, while Groton Dunstable has eight. And I gotta tell you, every time I look over the scoreboard, I wanna say Clark University, not one of the teams here. <laughs> but again, the Hillers, as both teams come back out onto the court after that timeout, after that shot clock violation, we'll see what Coach Greco has drawn up defensively for his team against the uh, almost overwhelming length of... This place is loud, Brian man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And one thing I noticed, uh, Ellie Eisenclaim not on the court right now for Groton Dunstable. Need some D here, Hiller girls. Man to man, strictly for Hopkinton. Everyone doing a great job staying with their respective person. And an and one called. A tough break there as Mr. Paul gets run over again. 
and one coming for Romick. She has had a fantastic game for Groton Dunstable, a chance to tie it with just under 30 seconds left. Well, I thought the referee got the call right. Marissa didn't really quite have her feet set. It was really close, but now the Hiller faithful are trying to create a little stir. There's a big free throw right here. Romick, it just oh, rims out. One. Goglin grabs the rebound. Easy. Gets it away to Huber. They need to foul her. They're going to need to foul her. They're going to need to foul two or three times. And they do foul Goglin there. Again, two more fouls needed for Grand Dunstable. That'll probably knock off another couple of seconds. And then it's to the charity stripe. No, they're, they're there, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. I was yeah. reading Hopkinton fouls. Excuse me. Yep. So one wow. and one coming for Hopkinton. Goglin stepping up to the free throw line. 21 seconds left, one point lead. This is like, career. think about Ivy's career on the, culminate here with a. Ooh, no good on the free throw. Caveney almost rebounds it. Shot clock off, 15 seconds left. Ball over to Romick. She launches the shot, no good. Offensive rebound. A nice block, block from Ivy Goglin, two handed block and, a foul. and she's fouled. A huge play from Ivy Goglin, the senior captain. That's where the money is made right there. And Ivy Goldlin, a two-hander rejection. And then drawing the foul. A huge play. I'll tell you what, Ivy, you know, I'm sure she'd love to have that one-on-one -on -one back a few, a few seconds ago. But to her credit, she kept her cool. Came close, could have been a foul down there, but the refs, to their credit, letting the girls play as much as they can tonight. And Ivy grabbed that, made, made a nice block, and then got the ball back, and here she is for another one on one. Yeah, another chance. For oh, Goglin. it's actually two. First free throw is good. She knocks it down. Two point lead for Hopkinton, and a timeout called. Rotten Dunstable making Ivy think about the second one a bit more. Double bonus, so that uh, takes a little of the, the edge off for Ivy. She knows Great. she's got two, and, the, and that big one, the first one's big, but this is even a bigger one. They get the three-point cushion. Right, and over at the over in the bench, she looks anything but rattled right now. Looks like she just wants to get out there and end this game, and rightfully so. A great effort from Gogolin, particularly on that last play with the block and then picking up the foul. Again, so assuming uh, Ivy will have this one free throw left, if she makes it, we'll put Hawkinson up by three. So at the very worst, we would have overtime. But again, we'll see what happens, what transpires after this timeout. But uh, an exciting game nonetheless, Steve. Unbelievable. Uh, you know, what's, what's one of the best scenes I've seen tonight is the girls. They, they seem to have their mojo right now. They're, they've got the composure. They seem a little bit of a, I don't want to say swagger, but they're, they, they look like they have some confidence there. But the best scene of the night for me right now is looking at Lily Morningstar with a big smile on her face on the bench. I know she's got crutches and she's got her knee situation, but to see her with a big smile, that was a really good scene right there. And hopefully the Hillers can just knock off this last 8.3 seconds. And then we're playing the division, the, the, the final the against Medway. Final, that's right, at WPI again. Coming up next for whoever emerges victorious from this one. Four seed Hopkins and Hillers against the one seed Groton Dunstable Crusaders. Big free throw coming for Ivy. Hard off the backboard, rebounded. Jordan Wynn has it. For Grand Dunstable, she there loses it. That'll do it. Hubner picks it up, and she's fouled from behind. And Grand Dunstable contending that she stepped on the out of bounds line, but the referee is saying he can't see it out of his hands. And Hubner will be shooting free throws. Mark Henley, the coach at Grand Dunstable, he's. If he keeps yelling, he might get a technical and cost his team even more. His body language just speaks for itself. He's just not happy with whatever the call. I, did you, I, I, um, I, did. He, I know what he was contending, that Hubner stepped out of bounds as she knocks down the free throw, non-plus by the coach's complaints. Um, but he, what the coach was saying that when Hubner stripped the ball that she had stepped out of bounds oh, in the I process. See, okay. um, but unfortunately for the, the way the ref was positioned, he was not able to make that call. And now... Hopkinton has a three-point lead with a chance to make it four and essentially end this game if Huber can knock down this free throw. Wow, what a game. I'll tell you what, back-to-back -back games. I mean, if you're a fan that played, paid your $10 to get in the building tonight, you got your you money's worth. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the last game went down to the final seconds. Right. And a great comeback by Medway. Right. The Hillers, clearly the underdog as the fourth seed going against the, the first seed. And then they, they're one of their best players. Lily goes down with a knee. Right, two minutes into the game, they got to go. Which could be a debilitating injury, not, obviously not just for Lily, but for the entire team. 
Right, and the, and the um, and then there's the Medway. I'm sorry, the Groton Dunstable coach saying you missed it. And again, buddy. yep, still still complaining to the ref. But again, at this point, they're still in the game. If she misses this free throw, he could cost his team with a technical. But Hubner ends it. Oh, Hopkinton's boy. going to advance to the final. You know, there's one point eight seconds left, but I'm comfortable calling it. Hopkinton <laughs> will go to the final to take on the Medway Mustangs for the fourth time this year at WPI. What a great effort from these Hiller girls today. Well, I got to say, the uh, it takes a village, and I, I would have to say the uh, Hiller crowd coming from Hopkinton all the way to Worcester here at Clark University didn't hurt. They clearly, um, well, both both fan bases did a great job today, but I have to say the Hillers. Uh, now, Hopkinton uh, travels very well. Being a, a Medway kid myself, um, I, I noticed that in every TVL game, the Hillers always have a sizable presence of home or away. And, you know, they got to give them a lot of credit for showing up because, you know, this is a technically um, a neutral site game, and it almost feels like a home game with the uh, support the Hillers have. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, that call that the, the, the Groton Dunstable coach, uh, Mark Henley, might be referring to is, a, you know, is the, the, the human element in the yep, game. Yeah, that's and it, exactly it. Yep. And uh, he probably had a point if it was that obvious, and uh, but that was – Clearly a So pass no inside, Caveney tips it away, and that'll do it. Your Hopkins and Hillers are going to the sectional final for the second year in a row. This time, they'll take on the Medway Mustangs after beating Groton Dunstable 43 to 39. Steve, I know we've been talking about it the past couple of minutes, but what an absolutely outstanding effort from this Hiller group. Well, congratulations to both teams tonight. That was a heck of a game, 43-39 final. I gotta say, excellent stuff. I'm um, really proud of the, the Hiller Nation, players, coaches, trainers. Um, just amazing. Uh, great, great job, everybody. And, and again, the Hiller, Hiller fan base doing their part tonight. And uh, I'm proud of them. I, I, I'm going to try to get to the game on Saturday. i gotta, <laughs> right. I got to run it by my manager and wife, Donna. <laughs> and, um, and, and, you know, before we go, see, I don't yeah. want to cut you off, but I want to forget. I want to thank Mr. Tom Dings for trekking out, making the journey for us, because without him, we wouldn't be able to broadcast this game for you. And good, good again, point. Steve, thank you for making the journey as well. I, I left you high and dry in the last game. I apologize. Oh, no, but no. again, the Hillers take this game over top seeded uh, Groton Dunstable 43 to 39. And we will see the Hillers against Medway in the sectional final at WPI. Again, for Steve Spector, I'm Tim Vladek. I want to thank you all for joining us here at Clark University.